Welcome to Leading the Way, a video series about addressing challenges in biomarker testing. Today, you will hear important insights about biomarker testing standardization in advanced ovarian cancer from Dana Clark, a genetic counselor at a major academic institution. Hi, I'm Dana Clark, a genetic counselor and testing advocate at a large academic institution. As a genetic counselor, I primarily see breast and ovarian cancer patients for hereditary cancer risk evaluations and assessments. My responsibilities include coordinating biomarker testing, sharing results with the team, and counseling patients. I have helped lead the charge on several biomarker testing improvement projects at my institution. Our motivation to improve biomarker testing was peaked after we assessed a sampling of our patients. We found that our ovarian cancer testing rates for germline BRCA1 and 2, more formally known as breast cancer susceptibility gene 1 and 2, were about 25 to 30 percent of testing guideline eligible patients when the goal was to test all eligible patients. This motivated our team to change our process. We knew we were very far from our goal, and we had a lot of work to do to get back on track. Today, I will share our journey with you. I will discuss the challenges we faced, the approaches we took, and the results of those efforts. In Chapter 1, I'll discuss the importance of starting with pilot efforts to address challenges. In Chapter 2, I'll talk about the impact of negotiating responsibilities across your team. Lastly, in Chapter 3, I'll share how we employed tracking systems that improved visibility to help ensure our patients were being tested appropriately. My hope is that the challenges we've overcome will inform your own testing standardization strategies. As we go on this journey, it will be helpful to note that testing standardization doesn't require specialized expertise, but rather an investment of time and effort. Let's get started. In this series, I share strategies that my team and I used to standardize testing for homologous recombination deficiency, or HRD, in patients with advanced ovarian cancer. First, let's discuss how our pilot efforts helped to guide our approach to standardization. We wanted to test all eligible patients, but the work needed to do that seemed unmanageable given our level of available resources. By starting with small projects, we were able to break this task down into pilot efforts so that it felt more manageable. We presented our ideas at a multidisciplinary clinic where we hashed out concerns. This helped to get the team on board. The first project involved incorporating a best practice alert in the electronic medical record or EMR. This didn't work because the pop-up could be cleared even if the provider didn't write the referral. Next, we tried embedding genetic counselors within the infusion clinic. We visited patients on site. However, this was not an efficient use of the genetic counselor's time. Patient availability during treatment was limited, and we found that scheduled visits would have been more effective. Finally, we developed a system where automatic referrals to the genetic counselors were generated after patients had been seen by their gynecologic oncologists. However, documents needed for the referrals could be misplaced, sometimes for months. Although the pilot approaches didn't work as we intended, we did learn a few things. First, small efforts made it easier to get started with process improvement. We were motivated to improve our testing rates and starting small helped us build momentum. While these pilot approaches didn't improve our rates, they did help us to clarify what was and wasn't working. And they also helped us to come to the realization that a more ambitious approach was necessary. So don't be afraid of failure. There is always something to learn from failure it is better to fail small than to fail big. Second, these projects provided the experiences we needed to develop effective solutions for our institution. To move forward, we learned that we needed to coordinate our efforts with the gynecologic oncologists. 
understanding their workflow and collaborating with them proved to be key to more successful initiatives. To learn how we went about the next step in testing standardization, please watch the next chapter in our story. In this series, I share strategies that my team and I used to standardize testing for homologous recombination deficiency, or HRD, in patients with advanced ovarian cancer. First, Let's discuss how we reassessed and reassigned certain roles and responsibilities, which led to improvements in our testing strategy. At the initial appointment, patients are often overwhelmed with their cancer diagnosis. The gynecologic oncologist's primary responsibility is to address the patient's immediate needs. As a result, sometimes conversations around biomarker testing become a lower priority to be addressed later. During our pilot efforts, we learned that genetic counselors could take on more responsibility. My team and I took on the task of ordering somatic breast cancer susceptibility gene 1 and 2, or BRCA1 and 2, and HRD tests under the guidance of the treating physician. Previously, the genetic counselors only ordered germline tests for BRCA1 and 2, and it was the gynecologic oncologist's responsibility to order somatic tests for HRD, including BRCA1 and 2 and genomic instability. As genetic counselors, we are well-versed in how genetic diseases affect our patients and the importance of specific genes. So even though some of our genetic counselors were a bit hesitant about this change, we were well-suited for this role. We continued to counsel on germline testing, but it was the gynecologic oncologist's responsibility to counsel on tumor testing, including HRD testing. In addition, the genetic counselors ordered germline and tumor tests at the same time, and eventually these would be consolidated into a single order through a commercial lab. Having the genetic counselors take over test ordering proved to be a very effective solution. Somatic tests for HRD, including BRCA1 and 2, and genomic instability, as well as germline tests for BRCA1 and 2, were being ordered more regularly for eligible patients. Gynecologic oncologists became more comfortable delegating this responsibility, and the genetic counselors became more comfortable taking on their expanded role. We tried this approach at our main hospital first. Once we saw that it was a success, it was implemented at our satellite locations. To learn more about our next steps in standardization, please watch the next chapter in our story. In this series, I share strategies that my team and I used to standardize testing for homologous recombination deficiency, or HRD, in patients with advanced ovarian cancer. Here, I will share the importance of adopting a user-friendly tracking system to help ensure that all eligible patients are being tested. In the Electronic Medical Record, or EMR, we had difficulty tracking who had been referred for testing, who had undergone testing, what tests they received, and the results. We realized we were missing patients who should have been identified and tested. To address this challenge, we needed a reliable way of tracking our patients' testing status. With the support of an innovation grant, we developed a secure web-based portal, which was separate from the EMR. It could recognize ICD-10, or International Classification of Diseases 10, code entry, and alert a genetic counselor. With this functionality, all our documents were in one place. We could review charts without having to manually search the EMR. We could also track all the necessary testing details at a glance and follow up with ease. We realized if we could easily track this information, we could improve these measures. While we used an automated web-based portal to address our challenges, this is not the only option. As long as the system can easily track patient referrals, testing performed, order status, and results, then it can be used to organize patient testing information. This system made it easy to quickly assess the patient's current testing status, run reports, and notify the appropriate provider as needed. We were also able to monitor our patient's testing status in real time, and that made the testing needs more visible to our staff. 
these changes helped us to drastically improve our testing rates. Our aim is to ensure that all advanced ovarian cancer patients undergo HRD testing. A sampling of our testing rates revealed that we were very far from this goal. The best way to address this was to create a standard approach. We had to overcome three barriers. First, our team felt that the enormous task of improving our testing rates was beyond our reach. By breaking our approach down into pilot efforts, we were able to transform this task into small, manageable projects. Second, even though biomarker testing results are very important for making treatment decisions, time doesn't always allow for biomarker testing to be the priority. By reassigning the responsibility of ordering, testing is done more regularly for our patients with advanced ovarian cancer. Third, it was difficult to keep track of our patients' testing information in the EMR. By implementing a user-friendly web-based portal, we increased visibility to our patients' testing information and could quickly assess their testing status. With these updates, providers could make more informed treatment decisions and found more satisfaction in their roles. I hope you found my experiences useful, and I encourage you to move forward with your own biomarker testing standardization efforts. Thank you for your time.